This is Mortification of Spin, a bully pulpit from the Alliance of Confessing Evangelicals. We can continue only with your help. Visit mortificationofspin.org to make a donation or call 1-800-488-1888. After the podcast, listen for details on how you can receive a free resource. Well, you are listening to Mortification of Spin, Bully Pulpit, and uh, I'm here with uh, my two cohorts as always. I'm Todd Pruitt. I'm with Carl Truman and Amy Bird. And we like to kind of get out and about, and today we're in a particularly dangerous location, a Christian <laughs> bookstore. And uh, I say dangerous because uh, Christian bookstores are a bit of a minefield these days. Although I will say I'm pretty excited about a, a new venture from the Alliance of Confessing Evangelicals. It's going to be a, a line of uh, reformed uh, romance novels um, and featuring... I think some very good writing. I mean, I'm going to be posing for a lot of the covers, um, uh, pirates of Presbyterianism, that sort of thing. You do make a very attractive lumberjack. I, I do. <laughs> I do. The lumberjack uh, cover I'm particularly proud of. And then the pirate, uh, How do you get I, the six pack. Well, they have to airbrush the six pack on and, uh, the, the chest waxing was particularly painful. Um, but it was worth it because I, I look like a pretty fearsome pirate in the, uh, on, on the one, uh, cover. So we're excited uh, here at the Alliance about uh, this new line of, Christian romance novels, and maybe we'll be able to see them right here in a Christian bookstore, right along with the other uh, best sellers. Well, I know, Todd, that you're a, you're a man uh, who likes to ban books yep. among ban your them congregation. Ban them and burn them, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any dawn raids recently on any members' houses <laughs> to confiscate forbidden literature? Or? No, we're tracking down a few. We've got a few ideas. We've got their children informing on them, so we're mm -hmm. close. Well, here, as I'm glancing along the shelf here, just to give you a little taste of the kind of books that are obviously selling well among the Christian public, which in some ways gives you a great insight into how people are thinking, what they're looking for. Um, four titles that just jump out as I glance along the shelf. Uh, there's Jesus Calling by our old mm -hmm. friend uh, Sarah Young. We've had a lot of very respectful chats about that uh, mm -hmm. over recent days. Um, 1,000 Gifts. Uh, by Anne Voskamp, with a very moving cover of a, of a bird's nest with two eggs yeah. uh, in it. Uh, Four Blood Moons by John Haggy. Um, <laughs> yeah, the anti-Anne Voskamp, I would guess, uh, from the <laughs> cover there. And, uh, oh, Crash the Chatterbox by that delightful fellow, uh, Stephen Furtick. Yeah. What do you think that selection of titles tells us about what evangelical people are reading today? We're in trouble. It's almost like the church needs to begin a class instead of like the armor of God for spiritual warfare. It's like, you know, the armor of what we need to have discernment when we walk into a Christian bookstore mm -hmm. or. Um, yeah, they're doctrinal minefields. Catalogs. Yeah, they're doctrinal minefields. And most of what is there, because it's responding to the market, most of what is there is. Uh, at worst, heresy, at best, just really unhelpful. Yeah, I mean, a good example of that, I've just looked up the uh, the production puff on Crash the Chatterbox by Stephen Furtick. Let me read this to you. Uh, you know that voice, that little voice inside your mind that says you're not good enough to do what needs to be done, that you don't have value or a purpose. We don't want to listen to these thoughts, but sometimes we do. And they stunt our growth and potential for how God wants to use us in this world. Mm. I wonder how on earth you could write a book that was summarized, or the purpose of which was summarized in that way, if you had actually read any of the New Testament. <laughs> Carl right. and Todd, you both not good enough. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you hear that? well, you think about the slide of, of Christian thinking um, just over the last uh, couple of centuries. And so um, men who on their grave markers have things like, you know, here lies a, a poor wretch. Now we stand at the hilltop and sing our own praises. Um, we're a very different people. Um, Christian piety is an entirely different thing now, which uh, has nothing to do with holiness, but everything to do um, with my self image. Yeah. I mean, that little voice inside your head might just be this. You're made in the image of God. You are fallen in Adam, and that voice inside your head is your conscience yeah. telling you that you do not make the grade right. by the standards of the law of God, mm -hmm. and therefore you are in desperate need of a Savior. Right. If you don't want to listen to that voice, you're going to hell. 
Right. That's the basic truth. I don't think that one's making the top 10 list when you walk into the Christian bookstore these days. No. Probably not, but I'm betting my life that Chatterbox, Crash the Chatterbox <laughs> will. Yeah, and it, of course it may only cost Elevation Church $200,000 or so to make sure it's on the bestseller list, um, but it'll get there one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. Not that I'm cynical. No, no. Uh, cynicism and Todd Pruitt, not two uh, <laughs> phrases that I would put together in the in the same sentence. Yeah, but those those titles and, and again, the, 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 the Christian bestseller list really does tell us a lot about the condition of the church. Yeah. I'm going to make a very sexist comment here, Amy. I know that's very out of character I'm, for I'm, me. I, I um, want to hear it. Just remember my nunchucks to, are sitting here. I can see the nunchucks. <laughs> I'm, I'm having to brace myself to say something that might be slightly insensitive uh, and offensive. Uh, but I am struck by the way that a lot of what I would describe as a literature that represents sentimental drivel seems to be particularly popular with women. I think you're right. And I find it very insulting to walk in and see that and um, knowing that I'm part of the target market mm. with that material. And so I know I keep beating this horse, but I think that the churches really have done a good job in teaching biblical womanhood, but that we need to open the doors there and teach women theology. We need to equip mm -hmm. our women better in the church and uh, so that they can have the discernment when they walk in. If we're just reducing our teaching to women's issues, feminism, and whether or not we can work outside of the home, and even um, important conversations that we need to have sometimes about women's roles in the church or in marriage, we're not thinking about the wider topics of the whole entire gospel. And so we walk in there and we're looking for things to learn. And there it is right there on the shelf, marketed to us, I believe, in many ways. I think you're right. So you're running a, a ladies' Bible study or a ladies' study group at your church, mm -hmm. and you've got a choice. Mm -hmm. You can either use John Owen, Volume 6, Covering Indwelling <laughs> Sin and the Mortification of Sin, or you can read 1,000 Gifts by Anne Voskamp. Ooh. Which one are you going to go for? I'm going for the Mortification of Sin. <laughs> Why? Definitely. Why? Um, yeah. Well, because it's biblical, because it's doctrinal. I want, I want to teach theology. I want to teach the Bible. And um, while there are some things in Anne Voskamp's book that some women have been encouraged by, and the theme of gratitude is very good, there's also some very um, dangerous teaching in there as well. And it's a slippery slope. You know, you, you just a little bit you hear, a little bit of mysticism there. Um, even I wonder some of the language in there about gratitude almost becomes law am i grateful enough mm -hmm. and what we really need for true sanctification for true unity for true growth we do need to learn about our sin more we do need to mortify sin and that's a very important topic now todd in terms of encouraging uh congregants you and i are both pastors who try to encourage our congregants to read good literature obviously you have this very successful policy of, of banning books and, yes. and, and burning yeah. wicked ones at your church right. and right. hey it's always fun to burn a book it um, is um, it's great it. but okay so th that's the way we get rid of the bad literature right. Right. We, we have these huge bonfires outside our mm -hmm. church regularly dawn raids on members yes. houses, that sort of thing um Occasional execution of somebody who may have recommended a, a bad book. Just pour on courage. Les Just talking about it. It's making me happy. Keep yeah, going. Yeah. I mean, I've learned a lot from the couple of years that I've known <laughs> yeah. you. Uh, positively, how yeah. would we go about encouraging congregants to, to read good literature? Yeah. So um, at the church I pastor, we have a, a, a little section literally carved out in a wall where we uh, regularly stock with books that are worth reading. <laughs> Sounded slightly scary. When you said carved out, I was thinking of some sort of, you know, oubliette cell you could throw people into <laughs> when they read the wrong stuff that's a good idea though that is a good idea <laughs> we have a cell where we lock people up who aren't reading the right things good that's good. been very effective no teach them a lesson God, exactly hanging's we, too good for these people. exactly <laughs> no we have a little section that's covered with bookshelves and we we uh stock it with books that are very very well worth reading um, Any by me or uh, uh, we have had books by you. We we currently still I think have one copy left of Housewife Theologian, so we're almost going to need more of those. You bought two originally, I heard. Uh, yeah, yeah, and one of them just went right away. My wife's really enjoyed it. Um, but um, uh, and and then recommending from the pulpit, um, uh, referencing good books. Um, Carl, as pastors, when when we say to people in our church, "Hey, I read this and it's really helpful, and you ought to read it." 
people go buy them. Yeah. And that helps to create a reading culture. Giving books away. I know you do that in your church. Yeah. That's a great yeah, thing to do. Um, particularly good, like on a Sunday evening service or that kind of thing. Uh, you know, give, give a few books away in an informal way. Uh, capacity. Um, we do that for the kids as well. I, I give yeah, books for the nice. adults, but I right. also give books to the kids in mm-hmm. order to a get the kids having a, a good impression of church, and b getting them in the habit of reading good mm-hmm. stuff yep. early yep. on. And and I do. I I want to reemphasize again. It is you know, and we joke, and and we joke because of <laughs> of things that people say about us. But um, it is important to to identify for people. Listen. Uh, this is a book, um, obviously, I can't stop you from reading, but I would encourage you not to read it mm-hmm. because yeah. it could be You will harmful. be executed if I catch you with because it. Because we <laughs> will kill you. We have a um, no, that. but uh, it, it's, it's not good for you because the fact is uh, we live in a time where, um, uh, well, I, I, th- I think part of the problem is, you know what, if, if there's less than helpful things, that's fine. I just read it for the good bits. But the problem is, and, and Amy, you mentioned in, in Ann Voskamp's book. While there are things in there that are good that we would say amen to, it's mixed with so much stuff. It can be like a gateway book. Yes. You know, like there's gateway drugs. Yes. It could lead into worse things. And there's and there's so much mysticism, Roman Catholic mysticism in there that, that I'm just not comfortable recommending that because things that she does in that book that are good, you can find in other books where you don't have those pitfalls. And we, and, you know, we have to help people, particularly if we're pastors, we have to help our people read well and warn them against the error that's very very thoughtful thoughts to close i noticed that the the manager is actually moving towards us with the security guards at this point <laughs> clearly <laughs> upset that we've rubbished half of if not 80 percent of his stock yeah I'll, I'll grab some testaments <laughs> so, on the way out so, out of jesus yeah, potpourri pot this I is saw. mortification <laughs> spin bully pulpit making a hasty exit back <laughs> onto the high street uh providing the security man doesn't catch us we will be with you next week <laughs> This has been a Bully Pulpit from Mortification of Spin, a podcast of the Alliance of Confessing Evangelicals. Just for listening, we'd like to give you a free resource. Visit our website, mortificationofspin.org, to find a link to the download. Mortification of Spin is a production of the Alliance of Confessing Evangelicals. Alliance ministries include reformation21.org, every last word with Philip Reichen, and events held from Florida to Sacramento. To learn more about the Alliance, visit AllianceNet.org or call 800-488-1888. We can only continue to bring you Mortification of Spin with your support. To make a donation, please visit MortificationOfSpin.org or call 800-488-1888. Please listen again and don't forget your free download.